I'm so glad that everybody's here this morning, and uh, uh, they asked me to do the youth uh, service, and I'm probably one of the oldest ones here, but that's okay, I'm still young at heart. I found out a long time ago that if you want to stay young, you hang with the young. <laughs> Amen. If you want to stay old, you hang with the old. Hallelujah. I don't want to, I don't want to get old, so I'm not going to hang with the old necessarily. So I hang with the youth because uh, they're young and vibrant and they always got something to tell me, always got something to say. So I'm praising God this morning for being able to do this. I want to do this, uh, if you will, if you'll help me out. And um, uh, I'll try to kind of move around here because I like to see the, few, the full view. I would like everybody to, uh, we're going to honor God. We talked, Pastor talked about protocol in a sermon on a Wednesday night and uh, got me to thinking. And I want, I want to go over that psalm again with everybody. I would like everybody to stand and honor God and His Word. And I want to recite Psalm 23. And you don't have to have your Bible. I just want you to repeat it after me. And kids especially. This is for y'all. But um, this is Psalm 23. And we're going to do this to honor the Lord. So just repeat this after me. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. In green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You can be seated. Praise God. Amen. This is the Psalm of the Shepherd, written by David. Some believe, most people, that is, that I've studied after, believe that um, he wrote it as an old king, looking back on his life, looking back on what he went through in his relationship with the Lord. And he wrote that out of his heart in thanksgiving to his God. Of all the things he's been through, of all the things he's experienced, he still found him a good shepherd. Now, the Bible talks about shepherds. The Bible is a book of shepherds. Israel was a nation of shepherds. And in the New Testament, the Bible talks about the shepherd being a good shepherd, a chief shepherd, uh, excuse me, a great shepherd, and a chief shepherd. A good, a chief, and a great shepherd. And that's talking about who? Who do you think that shepherd is that I'm talking about? That's right, God. And what's God's name? Jesus. Because you know they got people out there today that say God is this guy from A to Z. No, no, no. Our God is Jesus. So this is the shepherd, this is the shepherd song. This is the psalm or the song about G the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the good shepherd in John 10. He's the great shepherd in Hebrews 13. And he's the chief shepherd in 1 Peter chapter 5. And that's what it has to, that's what it's talking about. Now, if you have a shepherd, then you have sheep. How many sheep do we have here? A hundred. All right, we got a hundred today. We, we found Tegidra. She was, and look at her. She looks so good. You did a great job. Whoever that was was out there taking, looking for her. But uh, anyway, so if you have a shepherd, you have sheep. And you know what, what do the sheep say? Huh? So all the sheep say, bah. Alright, so uh, if you're a sheep, then you're going to say bah. And if you say bah, and because you're a sheep, it's because you need a shepherd. And you see, it's not, that, it's not like the sheep are out there voting on it. They need the shepherd. It's not, they desperately need the shepherd. That's what I want to talk about today, is why we do need the shepherd. Amen. So, as usual, when I teach children's church, I always have a little game. How many of you want to play a game this morning? Now, you adults, I know y'all like to play games, but I'm not going to embarrass you now. Now, if you want to step up to the plate, that's fine too. The only thing is, to play this game, you have to wear pants. Sorry. <laughs> How many wants to play a game, a race game? 
Now you got to dress. You, got, you want to? Come up here, my brother. Come on. Come on. You got to get up. Come on. Come on. That's it. But I'll tell you what. These kids are so fast. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Okay, great. Now, see, usually I give them name tags because I'm bad on names. I know my name is Patrick, I think. But anyway, what's your name? Keon. Keon? Keon. Keon. Great. Keon, great. I'm glad you're here to help me. I need somebody else to, yes, you, you've got pants on? Yes, you do. And what's your name? Nehemiah. Ne I know who you are, Nehemiah. Well, you, you got something, uh, you got a nice pretty shirt. This is what I want you to do. I want you to do the sheep walk. Do you know how sheep walk? Show me how a sheep walks. Now, I would show you, but somebody will have to help me get up. <laughs> All right, you know how, well, I know, but you're wearing, you, you can't, you're wearing a dress. All right, you, can you do a sheep? Show me how a sheep walks. You don't know, no idea. Do you know how, you know how a sheep walks, walk like a sheep. They're going to make me do it, Ernest. They're going to make me get down. So hold on, here it is. This is a sheep walk. This is what I want you to do. We're going to do the sheep relay. Okay, so come over here, sheep. Say bye. Say bye. All right, great, great sheep. All right, you two line up in the, in the sheep walk position. Get on fours. There you go. And I want you, to, I want you to race down through here. Do not touch anybody's toes. And come right here and stop. Are you ready? Where are you? Are you ready? You got it? That next post. You ready? Get set. Go. Yeah, the sheep are walking, they're walking. Look at him, look! Oh! Wow! Come here, young man. This guy's so quiet, but look at him go, huh? Well, anyway, that's how the sheep walk. Now, we know sheep walk, but anyway, I got something nice for you. Here you go. Brother Pat always gives nice things. Uh, your parents probably don't like him, especially when they get the dental bill. But anyway, God bless you. Thank you so much. So, we know the sheep walk and because they are walking alive they need a shepherd and that's what I'm going to talk about with y'all this morning and uh, anyway <laughs> oh, this psalm is talking about being a shepherd but it's about the Lord Jesus the first verse of that says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want by the way if you have a different version of the Bible I'm out of the King James but I found one on the internet called the easy to read version it's a paraphrase it's a real great version by the way when I first got saved I was listening to WLUX uh, 1550 AM brother Jimmy Swagger station that's the old time I'm back you know I'm back in 73 is when I got saved anyway they had a guy who on um, Bibles for the world who gave out free Bibles and of course that was for me so he got a, I got a living Bible paraphrase and I started listening or reading that living Bible paraphrase don't ever be ashamed of what version of the Bible you have now on the radio programs I listened to the King James uh, most of the ministers use King James so I followed along and after a while I got used to the English language there and I just put aside my living word uh, my living Bible the paraphrase but the English the easy to read version is a paraphrase and it's not one I would use for study but one I would use to understand the word of God and it says it like this that first verse the Lord is my shepherd my shepherd I will always have everything I need see that's a that's a good one I like that that you know that's a paraphrase but it gets you the meaning doesn't it it makes you understand something that he didn't say I have everything I need then the Lord is my shepherd no he said the Lord is my shepherd and because he's my shepherd, because he's your shepherd and my shepherd, then I have everything I'll ever need in my life. Because the Lord is where he needs to be in my life. So, we, you know, we hear a lot about talking about Jesus and about what he can do is saving Jesus, healing Jesus, delivering Jesus. And he's all those things. But see, in this psalm, it emphasizes the personal ministry that Jesus has for, every, for us, his own, every moment of the day. Not just when sickness comes or when we get in trouble. That he's there for us. No matter what we go through, no matter what we experience, our good shepherd, guys, is there for us. And because he's there for us, there's nothing ever that we will not ever, ever, ever need that is not going to be fulfilled. Now, David wrote this psalm and he said he was my shepherd. Now, what does that mean when I say the word my? What do you think he meant when he said my shepherd, guys? What do you think he meant? 
that he's your shepherd. That's true. It means personal. Now, I can say Jesus is Sister Clois's shepherd. And she'll say amen to that. But what about me? But when I say my shepherd, it's mine. For example, for example, all right, who do these belong to? How do you know that? I mean, you know, does anybody... One time I had the ugly, <laughs> I brought the ugliest thing I could find and I raised it up and said, who does this belong to? And some guy raised his hand, that's mine. I said, that's not yours. I got it out of my attic. Anyway, the, these are my shoes. They're not your shoes. Are they your shoes? Okay, they're not. They're not. They're not your shoes? No, they're my shoes. So when you say my shepherd, you're saying more than just something, you know, religious. You're saying that is my own personal shepherd. Like these are my own personal shoes. Now, how about this hat? Who's this hat belong? Isn't this a beautiful hat? Huh? Huh? My sister-in-law gave that. I, my my sister-in-law. My daughter-in-law gave this to me. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful to give to a you know father-in-law there? Anyway, uh, <laughs> she's not here, so I can talk about it. Anyway, uh, so this is my hat. I only wear it on special occasions when I'm trying to be n not seen and noticed. I guess I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, this is mine. It's not. But would it fit you? But do you think this will fit you? Yes, it will fit you. Sure. But is it yours? No. Okay. Let's see. Let's go down here. You're good, man. Now you're fast. You need to get some track going here. Is it? Let's see if this. Well, let's get this. Wait, you got something? Oh, let, it, there. Now it fits, but is this yours? Huh? No. No. This is my hat. See, so I get to wear it. See, it's mine. It fits me. It's perfect. Now you say, why do you wear hats like this? Listen, I found a long time ago if you if you dress like if you put a hat on like that, people leave you alone. <laughs> If you get them expensive hats, they can think, hey, you got some money on you? No, <laughs> not me. No, but if you put these hats on, they say, oh, bro, look, you, you laugh. You laugh. At one time at Walmart Denim Springs, I had worked all day in the yard, and I came in my shorts and my T-shirt and my old ruddy hat, and I walked up, and I was going into Walmart, and some lady came out and gave me some money and said, God bless you. <laughs> and Sean said, well, what did you do? I said, I took it. I said, God bless you too, honey. <laughs> That's the honest and God truth. <laughs> I'll take it whatever way it comes. Well, anyway, this is my hat. Those are my shoes. And, <laughs> and the Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. He's mine. So just something that David has very, very personal. And you see, that's the way Jesus wants to be. He wants to be as personal as the clothes you wear, as the toys you have, and the things that you have. It's because it belongs to you. So this is, this is just not a, you know, people make Jesus out to be such a religious figure sometimes. But really what Jesus wants is to be a really personal part of each and every one of our lives. Children, that's so true. That is so true. I got saved when I was 17. I don't regret any moment. I'll never go back. But you know what? I'm sorry I didn't get saved earlier. Because the best life I've ever lived. You know, it's the best life I've ever lived. But Jesus wants to be that kind of a personal God. He wants to be the Lord, our, my shepherd. And therefore, because he's my shepherd, I won't lack anything. I won't need of anything because he's going to take care of it. Now, just how personal is Jesus? Let me ask you this. How many smart people do we have here in this room? Don't raise your hand, adults. <laughs> all right. Now, I know you're smart. You, you've got all those honor. I know you're smart. You're wearing glasses. You see, all people wear glasses are smart. Did you know that? See, she's wearing glasses. Are you watch? Are you smart? Yes. Ah, glory to God. You see, brother, you think brother Pat's from out of space or something? All right, how long? How long of a distance is it from here to Pluto? By the way, anybody know what Pluto is? Back in my day, Pluto was a planet. Now it's not. Now, you know, next year it's going to be something else. Anyway, you you know what Pluto is? How long do you think it take you to get from here to Pluto? How long? Uh, a hundred years. A <laughs> hundred years. 100 years? Pretty long time. And Pluto, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 20 centuries. 20 centuries? That's 20 times 100. Man, that's pretty close, too, actually. <laughs> but, but Pluto's way out there. Okay? It's not like you can get in your car and go to Pluto. Pluto's way out there. It's the ice planet, supposedly. I've never been. That's what they tell me, you know. But uh, furthest away from the sun and all that good stuff. But it's way out there. Now, some people believe that God is way out there, that He's way off somewhere. Let's say God's out there in Pluto vacationing right now. It's summertime. 
you know, it's hot. So he went out there and get cool, right? Because it's the coldest planet. It makes sense, right? So he's out there vacationing, and you want to go visit him. Well, I haven't talked to God in a while. Man, I've got to go see God. So you get in the space shuttle. They rocket you off from wherever they rocket you off at, in, uh, off in Florida somewhere, Cape Canaveral, Cape Kennedy, whatever they call it, and you take off. How long do you think it's going to take you to get to Pluto to see God? Anybody have any idea? You said 2,000. You said... Huh? 100 years? Yes. A thousand years, you'll never make it. <laughs> It'll take you 23 to 24 years in the space shuttle. So how old are you? Seven. Wow. You'll be 31. <laughs> how old are you? Nine. Ooh. What is that? 33? You'll be 33. Quite the man. Now, if I go, <laughs> I'll be 90 or so. <laughs> so I ain't going. <laughs> you go. But you see what I'm talking about? Now, God's way out there. 23 years to see God. Now, is that kind of a personal God that you want and I want? now? That's not the kind of God we serve. He's not way out there somewhere vacationing. He's not somewhere out there. I'll tell you where God is. He's right here. He's right here with us. He never leave us nor forsake us. That's what Jesus said. So you see, it's not somebody going way off. He's my shepherd. He's very personal. And, and, you know, it's the personal Lord and Savior who has an interest in us 24-7. He's working for us 20, uh, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So the question is, why do I need a shepherd? And the answer is, why do sheep need a shepherd? Why would a sheep need a shepherd? You would think sheep are pretty smart. Why, why do you think? Was that your hand raised? Did we answer that question? Yes, ma'am. We need shepherds because the sheep need um, to be taken care of. Oh, that's true. Sheep need to be taken care of. So that's one of the requirements of a sheep. They've got to have somebody to take care of them. Now, I don't know too much about sheep. You ever raise sheep, Ernest? No, I haven't. But I've, I've read about some sheep. And I've got a news flash for you. You ready for this? Sheep are dumb. <laughs> I didn't mean to insult you. I'm not saying you're not, you can do, I mean, all of you can do more than I can do. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about sheep. Okay? Bah. Say bah. They're dumb. Because they're dumb, they need a shepherd. They're needy. Because they're needy, they need a shepherd. See, that's why Jesus took that role. That's why Jesus calls himself the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, and the great shepherd. Because he takes that role. He steps up to the, back, to the plate. He says, yes, that's me. Because you know what? He recognizes about us us and I'm talking about every last single person in this room we're needy we, we needy because we're dumb <laughs> I mean I'm not saying you're not intelligent and I, I'm certainly not saying your grades show that every time I sit there on Sundays when they're handing out the money I wish I could go get me on my report card of course I may not get much money but you see what I'm saying I mean you look at it look what they're shelling out here I mean there's so many people with so many good grades it's wonderful you know <clears throat> but you see I'm not talking about that I'm talking about spiritually we need a savior we need excuse me a shepherd we need a savior but we need that shepherd we need a shepherd so because because sheep are like that the bible says this the bible says in isaiah 53 6 listen to this all we like sheep have gone astray now he didn't say all we like giraffes he didn't say all we like elephants he didn't say all we like kitty cats you got a kitty cat you got a dog got a squirrel got a hamster Got a gerald? What do you call it? Gerbils? He's got a tiger in his tank? Ah! Okay. Remind me not to visit you. All right. Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we like sheep, he chose a sheep, have gone astray. This is what the Bible says. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Why did he use sheep? Because God knows man. He knows mankind. They're easily deceived. And what I mean by that is that word astray means it's, they're easy to be deceived. Think about your life before Christ. Think about what you did. Think about what you said. See, you were deceived. We were, I was deceived. Easily. To join the crowd. To do what the group says. To do, see, boys and girls, that's the problem. Everybody wants to be part of something. And there's nothing wrong. See, that's sheep. That's us. We want to be part of something. Like that little girl, went, uh, uh, the shepherd went after the uh, tequidra because she had gone off. You know, got hurt. 
You see, that's, that's, sheep want to be together in a flock. They want, they want that companionship. You see, there's a need in each one of us for an intimacy, a relationship. We all hunger after that. And you see, God knows that. And He knows that we're easily deceived. And He knows that we need help. See, and, and, and that's where the Word of God comes in. In fact, Romans 3 says this in chapter, verse 10. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of their way. They are together all become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. You see, we don't want it. Sometimes I want to hear that. Now, boys and girls, I'm telling you right now. The only good person there is in this whole universe is Jesus. He's good. Don't set any man up. Don't set any woman up. I don't know how much you love your parents, how much you, you look to them. And they, and they are role models and they are examples. But you know what? They're going to fail. But Jesus will never. See, he's the, he's the example. He's, he's the one that we need to look to and, and look upon. Now, but what I'm trying, I'm, I don't want to insult your intelligence. I don't want to make you feel like, well, he's making fun of my little baby. Don't you dare make fun of my little baby. Well, that's true. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody's little boy or little girl. Or myself in particular. But you know, I've got, I've got 60 years behind me. And every year that I, I live, I realize how dumb I am. <laughs> I realize how much need I am. And that word dumb, I mean how much I need God. How much I need His help. You see. Now, let me ask you the question. How many A students do we have here? Wow. How many B students? Wow. Well, you're, if you're an A, then, then don't raise your hand because you're an A. You are a B student? Was that a laugh? Did you laugh? Okay. Man, I started getting a response out of him. Saying, this guy, man, he can run, though. Can you see that? <laughs> he can run. So if you need somebody to run, there's your man. <laughs> so got a lot of smart kids here, don't we? A students, B students. And uh, I lost my report because I don't know what I was. But you know what? You might be the brightest student. And we got some. And, and you might have the honor roll every, every semester. Know all kind of things. But here's the question. And listen to Brother Pat. Do you know everything? Good. I was waiting for somebody to say yes. And I'm saying, that's your problem. <laughs> Yeah, well, I work with a few like that. <laughs> Say, yeah, I know everything. I know, yeah, but you just got it. I know everything. I know everything. Uh-huh. Yeah, you sure you do. No, nobody knows everything. That's why we need a shepherd. See, and we are, the fact that we're needy and that we could be easily deceived, the Bible says, the fact that we need constant care, protection, and see, and guidance. See, all have gone out of the way. He, he's not saying just a certain few. All of us. The best of us. The best person. The best woman. The best man. The best leader. The best pastor. The best of everything. The best teacher. The best Sunday school teacher. Whatever. You see, we all, all can go on, gone out of the way. we are all, all got something in us that needs to change. We need Jesus. And we can be deceived. Let me show you what I'm talking about. How many of you like drinks? How many of you like cold drinks? Seriously, put it that way. <laughs> Don't raise your hand. All right. You like a drink? All right. Well, I got some drinks up here. Did you notice that? Brother Pat brought some drinks. And I want you to see if there's somebody who would like to drink a drink. What is that? Oh, there's that thing. Oh, that, by the way, is still a clean glass. All right. Now, I don't know what that was. All right. Now, how many would like a cold drink? Somebody different. No, you already did the sheep walk. You, have you done anything yet? Have you done anything yet? You haven't? Tequila, you want to drink? Are you thirsty? How thirsty are you? Pretty? You very thirsty? You, I mean, I'm just. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, oh, you, th oh, you come here then, young man. We don't want you not to be. This guy is very. Look, this guy is my brother right here. This guy, man, he helps me out all the time. All right, so you stay right there, and uh, let's see. I, I'm gonna pick here. Is that okay, Tequila? You, you know, you don't need to drink anything because you've been hurt as a sheep, and you're still in recovery. Okay, now come up here. Now, okay, so you you hold this for Brother Pat. And don't drop it now. Okay, so anyway, this looks like, uh, this is a ginger ale. You like ginger ale? Say yes anyway. Just say, yeah, I like ginger ale. Yeah, yeah, I like ha <laughs> ah, I can't wait to ginger ale. Yeah, just say yes, say yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, don't shake it, Pat. What's the matter with you? All over, I got the dirty floor, and I'm going to have the, the coke on the floor. Sorry about that. Anyway, all right, here we go. Looks good, doesn't it? Mmm. Oh, look at that. That's going in there. Everybody can see that? Oh, my. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Ooh. 
What'd you say? It looks so good. Well, here, you hold on to it. By the way, it is real. Okay, It is real. I didn't bring anything weird. Now, let's see this one. Now, let's see. We'll put this under the arm like I normally do. Here you go. Now, there's yours. And let's see. Let's see what you get. All right. Oh, my. Oh, my, my. Look at that. Oh. 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 What do you think about that? What? What you? What? <laughs> what? What's the matter? You, you saw that? What? What is that? You want this one? No. No. <laughs> I told you he was smart. Hang on to that. That's yours. No, but don't, don't don't drink it, sister. Please, don't drink it. Don't drink it. Don't drink it. Don't drink it. Now, they both came out. Same can, same label, same name, same size, right? But was the inside was different. The inside was different. Now look, look here, sister. Don't drink that. That's just nasty stuff. This it's an easy. This is an easy thing to do. The Lord showed me how to do this. Most of the things he uh, that I do, he shows me. He teaches me what to do. I, that's all I do is watch him and then I present it. Of course, I had the craziness because, you know, he's not, but you know, I am. But anyway, sheep, sheep, have all, the Bible says all gone astray. All can be deceived. You see, she thinks she was going to get a nice ginger ale, but what she got was dirty water. He got the real, oh my, he got the real thing. But it's not what's on the label. It's what's on the inside. Now, but you wouldn't know that, would you? Did you know that you was going to get a, a glass of yuck? Did you? No. Oh, that is yuck. Whew. Anyway, now if you want, anyway, here, you take that home because that uh, you need one. Let me have that because I don't want you to drink it because, you know, no telling, but you take that home. Let's give them a hand. So, now if they can be deceived like that, <coughs> so can we. See, so can Christians. I mean Christians. I mean that's why we got to get in the Word of God, because <laughs> that's the only way, the only thing that we've got to help us. It looks okay. It looked okay, but you see, the Good Shepherd. One thing about the Good Shepherd: not all. We may have good grades. We might have uh, great jobs, and I mean, just everybody loves us, and we're in the papers and all that. But we don't know everything. But Jesus does. That's why He can help us whenever we make choices to be able to see what's on the inside. To see what's on the inside of a person who's sitting up there talking that talk in front of your in your face. To see what what that person is saying. What what's on the inside? Only Jesus knows. That's why you and I we need a good shepherd. Now, let me show you this. Let me see. Let me get the right one out. Now I've got something here in my pocket. This is a dollar, and it's eighteen eighty one. That's what this coin is was minted or made in eighteen eighty one. That's before anybody in here was born. And that's a long time. That's about 130, what, six? Is that do it right? 130 something years? That's a long time. Now, one thing the shepherd does, he shows us what we can't know or what we cannot see, but he also keeps us. He keeps us. That's what the Bible talks about. That the shepherd, he, he knows us and he keeps us. And we need to be kept. We need to be kept. See, this coin was kept. The person who had belonged to gave it to me to keep it, and she kept it. Her father gave it to her, and I'm keeping it. Now, this coin is $1. If you went to the Walmart, it'd only give you a dollar's worth of whatever, groceries or whatever. But it's worth about, uh, if it was in great condition, about 60 bucks. Now, if it had an S on it, I found this out. If it had an S on it, that means it, meant it was minted in San Francisco, it's worth 700 bucks. Yeah. You, don't you know Brother Pat was looking for that S? <laughs> what an S hat! What is an S? I gotta find an S! <laughs> I couldn't find the S! She, because a lady wouldn't have given it to me. That's probably why. But she kept it. And I kept it. And you know why she kept it and I'm keeping it? Because it's a treasure. You know, the little sheep that got lost, I heard the, uh, the, heard the, uh, the sister say that she loved that sheep and was going after it. See, Jesus loves us and treasures us and wants to keep us as a treasure. And he's going to take care of us no matter what happens in our life. 
I don't care what happens. He's there for us. He's going to keep us. He's going to treasure us. Just like I'm keeping this coin. And I'll keep it forever, I guess, until I pass it on or whatever. But this coin is worth something. Now, it may not, you may look at it and say, I don't know what it is, but I don't need it. But you know what? God looks at us and says, you know what? I see something valuable in that person. And I, I, I want that person. I'm going to keep that person. I'm going to care for that person because I'm the good shepherd. Jesus said in John chapter 10 that, that I'm the good shepherd. He said that himself. I'm the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Jesus gives everything that he is for his sheep. That's what he said he'll do. Everything. Everything. And that's you and me. We're the sheep. He lives for the sheep to take care of them. That, that's an incredible statement. Jesus said in John 10, 14, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I'm known of mine. Who really knows us best? Who really knows us best? Who is your favorite? Who is your favorite person? Jesus. What do you know about Jesus? Good. Ah. Anything else? Okay. Who's your favorite person? Jesus. Why don't you say Brother Pat? I mean, I'm standing right here. Oh. Because he's my shepherd. Good. Okay. Uh, Takedra. Do you mind if I stand in front of you? No, you know, I'm not going to bite you. I don't bite usually. Jesus. Yes. Because he died on the cross for our sin. Okay. Great. Praise the Lord. Now, my brother. Who is your favorite athlete? Not you. Damian Jones. <laughs> Hold on to that thought. All right, I got to find somebody else with an athlete. Who is your favorite? Well, no, you don't go into sports, do you? I didn't think. Let's, uh, where's, uh, my brother, who is your favorite athlete? Oh. Who? Oh. Okay. You know him pretty well? Yep. What does he play? Hmm? What, what kind of sports does he play? I don't know who he's talking about, to be honest with you. What <laughs> kind of sports he's playing? Oh, okay. All right. Now, how much do you know about the people that you think you know a lot about? What, what you know? I know our brother. Okay, what you know about him? Is he here? Uh, no, he's at Monroe. Okay, what do you know about him? He plays um, football. He plays football. Okay. Now, we have all our stars and all the people we admire, and we think we know all, all, all everything there is about them, but we really don't. But this guy, the one he knows, he knows about his son, right? You could tell me what his favorite food is, couldn't you? What's his favorite food? All of it? Yeah, but I think beef. Is it beef, beef stew? Oh, Thanks, no. sir. Cake? Pork chops. Pork chops. Oh, when y'all cooking next? Okay, now. You see... You, we could say we know Jesus. And we could say we know God. The question is, do we really know Him? Do, are we really intimate and personal? He wants to be personal with us. He knows us. He knows me from inside out. He knows everything I like, everything I dislike. He knows, he, he's like Santa. He knows when I'm good and when I'm bad and all that good stuff. But the thing is, do we know that way about Jesus? And that's the way, the relationship that He wants with us. See, because He's the one that's going to make us lie down in green pastures. He's the one that's going to lead me beside the still waters. He's the one that's going to restore my soul. He's the one that's going to lead me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. What does that mean? He's going to take care of me. When I'm sad, boys and girls, Jesus cares. When I'm afraid, He cares. When I'm down, He cares. He restores me and leads me in the right path where God is pleased and can pour out His blessings. That's what I'm looking for. You see, it's more than just going to heaven. It's living down on this earth and bringing heaven down here. That's what we what we'd have to live like. And, and that's why he's such a good shepherd. And because of that, we could say he's my shepherd and I shall not want. He's a good shepherd. And all the sheep said, bah. He's the great shepherd. Real quick, in Hebrews chapter 13, the Bible says this. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do His will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in His sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be God, the, to, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He's the great shepherd. That word great means big. 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 You think God is bigger than an elephant? You think God is... How big is an elephant? 
ah, it's a skinny elephant. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, elephants it might be a little baby elephant. That's true. All right, elephants are usually seven to nine feet tall and weigh about mm, 4,500 to 7,000 pounds. That's a lot of big grocery bill to pay for that, feed that guy, huh? <laughs> How about, you think God is bigger? Y'all know the state capitol building in Baton Rouge? You know that tall building? Is God bigger than that? Yeah, sure he's bigger than that. Now, how tall is that building? Well, it, it, it's about 450 feet high, which means if you get 82 people to stand on each other's shoulders, you can reach the top. 82. How about one of those cruise liners? Those carnival cruise liners? You think God's bigger than that? Sure he is. And that thing weighs tons and tons. And, and that thing is, if you get 182 people and stretch them across the deck, that's how long that thing is. But God is bigger than that. God is bigger than all of that. The question is just how big is God? How big is He? Because the Bible talks about Him being the great shepherd, the big shepherd. Is He big? How big? See, that's the question. I mean, that's the question we all got to ask in ourselves. It's just how big, especially when we need Him. We need to find out if He's able and capable of doing what He says He will do. Okay? And that verse we just read, boys and girls, listen, it says that He will perfect you. He will bring to completion what is needed so we can do His will. How many of you want to do God's will? Raise your hand. Sure, I want to do God's will. But you know what? I'm a sheep. I'm the sheep that is easily deceived. I'm the one that needs a, a shepherd. So He's got to bring me, show me, help me, guide me, lead me, teach me, strengthen me, empower me. He's got to do it all. Whew, thank God. So I can do His will. I know sometimes when people give testimonies, they make it so easy. But you know, they forget to include all of what they had to go through to get there. <laughs> Amen. I don't know because of a sake of time, you know. You know, you don't want to. But you know, let me tell you something real quick, boys. and girls. This is a real testimony of how great my God is. Are you tired? You want one of these? Here, let me get you one of these. Here you go. Don't drink it. Then they make you happy. Look at your smile. Kind of, sort of, but you want, I guess you want this one, right? That's worth about this dollar. What? I've never drank this before. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you got it then. I'm very happy for you. But um, 20 years ago, went on a canoe trip, real quick, real quick. And the weekend before I worked that Sunday, all Sunday I kept feeling, I knew I was going on a canoe trip with my family and my brother-in-law and my wife's sister and their two boys and my three boys and my wife. And I, something kept bothering me, something kept bothering me. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. So Lord, something's wrong, something's going on, something's going on. Tell me what it is. He said, he said, just trust me, just trust me. So I just put it in his hands. Well, we're going on the canoe trip. We're going down the, you know, the, the ever been canoeing on these little streams and it had just rained. So it was pretty quick, pretty fast. I'm in a canoe with my youngest son. My, my youngest son, Aaron, is about eight or nine years old. He's with me because I want to take care of him because he's young. And the rest are all scattered out. I think it was three canoes. We cross this bend. I'm the first one to cross it. And I see there's a tree that has fallen down in the, in the creek. And I'm, I'm going that, and I can't control my canoe, and we slam into it and turn over. Well, the other two canoes come quickly behind me, and they all plop over where everybody comes out of the water. Except Aaron. Aaron doesn't come out the water. We're all up out, out of the water. And, and, the, and the water's right. You know, when it rains and there's a lot of water, it's real rapid. And, that, and, and against that tree, that water was really pushing. Aaron didn't come out. Well, that water pushed me way down over here. And my brother-in-law, he's a fire captain in, in the police um, fire department at Baton Rouge. He's muscular. He's strong. We tried to get there because I knew he was drowning. I knew my son was drowning. He was under the water. He hadn't come up. <clears throat> of course, Jean and, and uh, her sister were all yelling, screaming. We're all excited. So I'm trying to get there, but I had to go against the water, and it was strong. All of a sudden, God, this is true. Aaron pops out the water. He shoots out like a cannon. And now he has a vest on. We, wore, we, we make our kids wear their life preservers. He pops out the water. And the first thought is, oh my God, we need to give him mouth to mouth or something. He's been under the water. It must be at least two or three minutes. So we go there. He's fine. I mean, he's just, he's fine. I said, Aaron, can you breathe? Yeah, Daddy, I can talk. I can breathe. I said, oh, okay. I said, what happened? He said, I don't know, Daddy. He said, I was trapped. I couldn't get out. Now listen to what he told me. He said, but you put your hand and grab my hand and yank me out. I said, no, son, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I was way over here. 
my brother-in-law, we were fighting against the current to get to you, and we couldn't get to you. He said, Daddy, somebody put a hand on me and pulled me out. He shot out there. God did that. See, he took care. He's the great shepherd. There was no way I could help him. But God took care of him. And God will take care of you, boys and girls. Take care of every one of us. Because he's a great God. He's the great shepherd. He's the great shepherd. You know, when you play baseball and you hit a homer, that is the right terminology, isn't it, brother? You like that? I'm not as ignorant as I look sometimes, though. But I do make mistakes. I got I to gotta go with the... When I go to somebody who knows what they're talking about. You hit a homer, and you, you run the first base, right? Then you run where? Second base. And then you run to... Now, what if you just sit down? Did you make a home run? Well, you're not, you didn't complete it. You didn't complete it. What if, you, what if you're running down the, on, the, on the football field and they pass you the ball and you catch it and, and nobody's all uh, uh, behind you trying to stop you and you're heading for the goal and you get right to the goal line, right to the goal line, right to the goal line and sit down. Did you make a touchdown? See, you didn't complete. That's what he's talking about. The great shepherd's going to complete He's going to put what you need to complete to go across that goal line. To make that home run. To be the success He wants you to be according to His will. Because He's the great shepherd. And because He's like that, you see, then the Bible says, I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. See, that's what David said. It's not because of me. It's because you're with me. I can face even death. Jesus. Jesus. <coughs> excuse me, face death. He died. He went through the valley and he came back out. And when he came back on the other side, guess what he said? Victory. Victory. See, wouldn't you want, if you, if you were going in the woods with somebody who says he's a guide, wouldn't you want somebody who's experienced to bring you? Now, if somebody's cutting on your gizzard, do you have a gizzard, by the way? Now, if you go in and the doctor says, your gizzard got to come out, you know what a gizzard is? No, I don't either. Uh, and he says, your gizzard needs to come out. And you say, okay, doc, that's fine. How many gizzards have you cut out in your life? Oh, none. Would you kind of say, well, maybe I don't want you to cut my gizzard out. Because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I want somebody who's experienced. Jesus has done everything needed for us to complete his will. He has provided, boys and girls, everything we need. He's just a big, great God. He's greater than anything we face. He's bigger than anything we ever will face. Because he's a great big God. Can sheep say bah? Bah. See, he has a plan. Listen, he said he prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. He anoints my head with oil. And he said my cup run, will run over. See, he's got a plan. He's got a purpose for everyone's life. It doesn't matter how, how big the enemy is. He's greater. Just how bigger? Well... How big is God? Let's see. Is he big like that? Is he bigger than that? What'd you say? Nah, I figured you would. Bigger than that? No? Yeah. No, yes, yes, no, yes. Is he bigger than that? Well, how much bigger can God get? He can get a lot. Okay, let's see. I know you're going to think this is going to pop, right? That's why I'm going to stand away from you so it pops, it won't hurt anybody. He's a big old God. See, he, as much as I keep blowing, he keeps growing. As much as I keep putting faith in him, bigger he gets for me. Bigger he gets. See, see, the more of God I have on the inside of me, bigger he is in my life. It don't take a rock scientist to figure Christianity out. No, it doesn't. More God in your life, more God you'll see in your life. More, more word you put inside of you, more faith you have to believe and trust and have him to perform and do the things he wants to do, boys and girls. He's just a big old God. But you see, what our problem is, we know he's a big old God, we hear he's a big old God, but then we go home and we start, well, nobody loves me. Well, mama didn't make the bread like I wanted her to. Oh. Well, mama... My brother looked at me wrong. They didn't choose me for the part in the play. You know what? I just am so worried. 
I don't think nobody loves me. And then all of a sudden, God gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Boop! <laughs> and you know why? Because I stopped blowing life. and I stopped acting in faith towards Him. I stop acting and believing that God is going to take care of my situation. I may not get part, picked for the part for the play, but you know what? I may not, that may not be God's will for me. God has something better for me. I ain't worried about it. So I let that brother, let that other sister shine. In fact, I'm going to support them. I ain't worried about my, my, what my brother's going to do to me because God's going to take care of my brother. I don't care if I have the, the bread buttered on the wrong side of the, uh, of the bread. It don't make no difference. I still eat and have fun. Amen. Amen. You know one thing I thought about? Real simple. Now this is real simple. Now listen, listen. Listen to this. It's cloudy outside. You're looking up and it's cloudy. Is the sun still shining? Yeah. It is, isn't it? Even in your darkest moments. Even in the times when you feel down. That nobody loves you. And look, children, they feel them ways. <laughs> you can look up and see the clouds, but know what? The sun's still shining. God's still there. He's a great shepherd. He's a great shepherd. And because He's a great shepherd, we can go through the things. And you know how big is God? He's as big as you need Him to be. He's as big as you need Him to be. The problem with us, brothers and sisters, listen, we don't stick close enough to Him. Now, this is, um, i got to hurry, Christian alien. You say, well, why are you bringing an alien here? Because the Bible says in Ephesians 2 that we were aliens at one time. It's in your Bible. Alien. It's in. Huh? Yeah, he died. Put him out. He, he lost his little thing. And, but he squeaked. This one don't squeak. See, they remember all this stuff, you know. Anyway, yeah. See, he's a Christian now. You see, we were an alien. Strangers to the commonwealth of Israel. Remember all that in Ephesians 2? Okay, y'all studied Ephesians. Yeah, you see, it's in there. We were aliens. We were alienated, separated from God. But now in Christ, we're not. But here's our problem. Let's see if I can get somebody to help me with this. Come on, help me, sis. Come on, you know what I'm not doing? I, I got to give y'all, I keep forgetting to pass out the treats too, see? All right, now, let's see. Now, this is Christian alien and this is Jesus. Isn't she pretty, Jesus? Sure. Now, this is the way usually people are with Jesus and a Christian. He's over here and you're over here. You go do your own thing. So, so do some things. Move around. Do something. Do, do something. Just move. Jump. Jump. Do something. Yeah, and see, Jesus is over here looking at that, scratching his head. and said, wonder why this person doesn't want me to come over there and get involved. Okay, you can stop now. So this is what we need to do. We need to learn. We need to learn that this is Jesus. We need to learn. And you go put your hand around his hand. And wherever Jesus is, we need to go. So go walk over there. See, wherever Jesus is, we're going to be with him. That, that's how simple Christianity is. It's a relationship. Come on back. See, look at those pretty eyes. He's so happy. And you see, wherever Jesus is, is where we need to be. We need him in our life because he's our great shepherd. Can you say amen? Okay, let me have my great, my great big uh, alien. And this is for you. And this is for you to have. Okay, so you go back to your seat. All right, so he's a great shepherd. He's a big shepherd. He's bigger, as big as you need him to be. And you know what? Ah, where'd he go? Ah, that's why the shepherd had this crook. See, he had this crook, and, and he, on this end, he used it to whap the enemy. The, the sheep have enemies. We have an enemy called the devil. And, and our shepherd uses it to, to whap his head. <clears throat> but what's this part used for? Huh? What's that? Well, that's probably, that may be part of it. There's a reason for this. There's a use for that. Anybody, why don't you come up here and I'll show them. Come on up here. Yeah, that's right. All right. Now, <coughs> let's see the enemies over here and I'm, and, and you're the sheep. No, you stand and look this way for me. That's all right, darling. Stand this way and watch. There you go. Stand that way and look up there right at the camera. Oh, that's right, the camera's there. All right, now, listen. Now, here comes the devil. Here comes the enemy. Here comes the wolf trying to eat you. So the shepherd takes a stick and pops him in the head and takes care of business. But let's say you start wandering off somewhere where you don't need to be. Ah, so that's what this is for. Wait a minute, baby. Wait, wait, wait. Come back here. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. And you see, that's what that's for. It's not only to whack the devil in the head. It's not only to defeat our enemies. Amen? But it's to keep us in line. So try that again. They like that demonstration. Try that again. Go over there. Oh, oh wait a minute, baby. Oh, no, no. Come on back. Come back. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. 
I told you them sheep are dumb. <laughs> Not this one, but I'm talking about in general. Okay? Now, you did such a great job, you can have all this. See, Brother, Brother Pat forgets that he brings stuff to give away. All right. And I know, and I've I got to give something to him too because he answered a question. And, I gotta get, and she, said, she said, what was it? She said, a pork chop. Pork chop. Pork chop! And Brother Ernest, you answered a question. And uh, I used you, Sister Chloe. There you go. And uh, something for your dental bill. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so we need the work of the shepherd, the great shepherd. But the great shepherd can only be as great as you want him to be. Spend time with your shepherd. That's what he's talking about. The third and last is probably the best, I think. It's the chief shepherd. And, and the Bible talks about that in 1 Peter 5 and 4. He calls him the chief shepherd. He says, when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown. Ah, here we go. Here's my crown. You can go to Burger King and get these. You don't have to go out there at Walmart and get them old expensive crowns and go to all that, you know, what is that, Michaels and all. Just, you know, nothing wrong against Michael, but you get a Burger King crown, get some paint, stick it on your head. You got a crown, baby. But them kids don't know any difference. <laughs> oh, I got me a crown! And then go and get some cheap uh, uh, something other and paint it on there. Man, you got it, man. No charge for that. That's just free today. Okay. Now, he said, when he shall appear, he shall... He sh where to go? Blah, 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 blah. He said, "When he shall appear, you shall receive." That's the sheep, a crown of glory that fadeth not away. He's the chief shepherd. That means he's uno muno. He's beginning, the end. He is the first place. What does that mean? He sets the rules, not me. He determines the things that happen in my life, not me. He determines. He he he's the one who wants to determine where we go, what we do, huh? Like James said, don't say you're going to do this tomorrow or the next day. He said, uh-uh, you need to check with God first. And then you know that's the best plan. Because His plan is always the best. Let me ask you this. Were you, when God created the moon, were you there? Okay. When God created the universe, were you there? When God created the, 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 the heavens and the mountains and the sea and the fish and the birds, were you there? No. So why do we tell, act like we know everything? Why do we tell God how He should run His universe? How He should run His plan? No. See, God knows the best. And He wants to tell us what we need. But we're the ones that say, well, we don't need God. We've figured it out ourselves. Wrong. Big mistake. <coughs> He's the chief shepherd. He's got to have first place. And, and the Bible says... That because he, he's, he, because he is this, he knows what he's doing. We can trust him. We can trust him. Let me show you a little illustration of trust real quick. Can I have somebody to help me with that? Well, let's see, somebody who hadn't... You haven't come up the... Come on up here. What are you doing? You usually up here in, in my face. What is the matter for you? <laughs> Man, what are you so quiet today? Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, now, I'm going to show you an example about trust. Okay, hold on to brother's hand, uh, Brother Pat's hand. Real strong, real strong, real good grip. There we go. All right. Whippy, whippy, whippy. Okay, look. All right. I want you to go backwards. No, no. I want you to fall backwards. That's better. Fall backwards. Now, I've got him. Well, what happened? Well, go back. Go backwards. Fall backwards. Now. No, no, stay there. You got to stay there. You got to stay there. Ah, now, he's trusting me, isn't he? You think I'm going to let go? Are you kidding? I don't want all that to be sued. See, that's how God is. When he says, trust me, we go back. Go going back. Go, no, fall back. There you go. And then we got to hold on to him for dear life. Because he's the one that's going to make it, help us make it through. He's the one that's going to do what we need in our lives. But you see, is, see that arm? My grip on him is pretty strong. But my, my grip on God has got to be stronger. It's got to be stronger. Because you know what? People like this, just like everybody else, they need, a, they need somebody, they need a strong person in their life to help them. We always will. There you go, brother. But you've got to trust. And you're going back to your seat. It's good seeing you. I, I, I forgot you were even there. Usually in my face all the time. He's a good I like him. See, we can trust him. The Bible says in the sixth verse of Psalm 23, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
when the sheep, the chief shepherd comes, he's going to bring something. It's a crown. Now, in that context, he's talking to pastors. He's telling them there's going to be a, a crown of glory for pastors. But you know what? When Jesus comes, he's going to bring a reward. You know what it is? It's right there. What's this right here? Heaven. That's our reward. Heaven. Heaven. See, I'm, I'm, I hate to tell you this, but you're not going to find automobiles in heaven. You, you're not going to find bank accounts in heaven. You're not going to find the bank in heaven. You're not going to find credit cards in heaven. But what you will find is what you need, and that's God. In heaven, everything you and I have suffered, everything that we've gone through for the cross of Christ, because we believe God, because we did what was right, yet what got stepped on or got insulted and criticized, everything will be made right. I don't know how God's going to do it, but this heaven is the great equalizer. He can do that. God is, can do anything He wants. Now you say, I really am suffering down here. And I, I can understand that. I can understand that. But in heaven, He'll make it right. You say, well, what about down here? He's going to make it good. You, you, he'll take care of you. He's the good shepherd. <laughs> He's the great shepherd. But when He comes, when you see Him next, He's going to bring you to heaven. And you see, that's the goal. That's the, the aim of every Christian. Whether they're two years old, whether they're five years old, 15, 25, 95. The goal is heaven. And that's what he's going to bring us to, is heaven. How do you get to heaven? Ah, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Let's see if I can find what I'm looking for. Ah. In the Old Testament... Now, some of you kids have seen me do this before. You remember that, don't you? In the Old Testament, God said to get to heaven, simple. You need ten tickets called the Ten Commandments. You meet them, you go to heaven. Oh, no problemo. I can do that. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> I don't want to know. Maybe I'll pick on you. You're just a nice guy to pick on. All right. Let's go over the first one. Uh, do you serve God? Okay, good. Great. Uh, do you have an idol set up in the back of your house somewhere you worship and fall down to and pray? Oh, great. So good so far, too. Okay. Uh, what's the third? Oh, I got a, had a sudden lapse of memory here. Ah, that's why I got to bring these. Aha, aha, aha. Hmm. You, you go to church? You're a churchgoer? Keep the Sabbath holy. The church, the, the Lord's Day, right? Good, good. He's doing good, isn't he? Got three out of seven. I'm three out of ten. Ever take the Lord's name in vain? No. Okay. I mean, ever. Mmm. All right. You honor your father and mother? Yes. Good. Look at this guy. He's shining. You see that? He only got one, two. Oh, he's almost to heaven. <clears throat> Ever lie? <laughs> You lying right now? <laughs> back up, back up, back up. Take care of him. <laughs> All right. Didn't quite make it. You ever lie? Hmm. Ah. You ever steal? <laughs> you ain't going to heaven. That ain't my rule. He made it. Well, then Jesus came along. Jesus had a little different take on it. Jesus said, you know what? If you just have one ticket, you can go to heaven. Just one. I like people that are simple, don't you? Just one. What's that ticket? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. There's your ticket. You got one too? I do too. I got one years ago. But you can have another. See, Jesus said, you know, all of, us, all of us are sheep. We've all gone astray. And he looks at that and he says, you know, Father, they're never going to make it. They're never going to make heaven. And the Father said, yeah, you're right. Only way is if someone goes down and dies for them and takes the, takes the penalty of their sin. And Jesus said, I step up. I'll do it. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and believe that God raised him from the dead, that he died for your sins and, and God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you'll be saved. But you see, it's got to be of the heart. It's just nothing you just say. It, you can get a parrot to say that, a bird to say that. But do you, in your heart, are you accepting the fact that you are like a sheep? You've gone astray. You've been deceived. And you need a shepherd. You need the good shepherd. You need the great shepherd. You need the chief shepherd. Because you know what? He's coming back. Jesus. He's coming back. And when he comes, he's not going to play games. He's going to take his own. And the Bible says he'll separate the sheep from the goats. Goats say, bah, that don't sound too good. No, that's a cow. Sheep say, bah. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. You say, oh, what's he talking about? The way they are, the way they act, the what, what they've done in their life? No, no. What they've done about him. If you don't have this ticket today, this ticket that says Jesus who died on the cross was raised from the dead for my sins for, for, for forgiveness of my sins then you're not going to heaven because you see brother sister we're not going to make the ten commandment route I didn't write this he did I'm sorry you're not <laughs> you're not going to make it but you see we can't accept Christ see boys and girls the biggest decision of your life is not where you're going to play when you go home, what TV show you're going to watch, who your best friend is, later on as you grow up, who you're going to marry, and what you're going to be. Your biggest and best decision is right now, Jesus. Asking him into your heart and life. Because that's what the shepherd, you know how he left the 99 and went after Tekedra? You know why he went after Tekedra? Because she needed him. You know where Jesus is today? He's where people need him. He's not where people don't need him. He's where people need him. He said, the sick need the physician. The sick need me. And I'm there where the sick are. And you're looking at one person who needs him. <laughs> so boys and girls, my question is, do you have this ticket? My question to you, my brothers and sisters, do you have this ticket? Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, I just ask that your Holy Spirit use what you said in this ministry time to prick hearts and to draw people to Christ, to draw people to the good shepherd who cares for them, the great shepherd who's bigger than anything that comes in their life, and the sheep, the cheap shepherd who will come and bring them to glory, bring them into heaven. Father, I ask for your Holy Spirit now to move and minister to these hearts. In Jesus' name. Now listen, boys and girls, at every eye closed, every head bowed. And anybody in this room, if you've never accepted Christ, you've never s s meant business with God and said, you know, Lord, I need you like a sheep needs a shepherd. I need you to come into my heart and cleanse me of my sins and one day bring me to heaven. If you've never done that but would like to, I want you to raise your hand. Anybody here, raise your hand. Keep your eyes closed, head bowed. Anybody here? Anybody here? You, my dear? Okay, great. Okay. You, my brother? Okay, that's two. Anybody else? Anybody else? Them? I see your hand. Okay. Those that raise your hand, I want you to make a big step of faith. Remember when Brother Pat was blown into the balloon and God got the balloon got bigger and bigger? Well, there's a step of faith we need to do, and that step of faith is to come to Him. And I want you to step up here with me come come stand in front of me if you raise your hand come on 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 and just face me just face me okay and we're going to accept Christ today we're going to get the ticket we're going to get the ticket ah let's see how many we got one two three four <laughs> God is good he always provides he always gives me what I need so we have four tickets and four tickets to heaven you want to go to heaven you don't want to go to heaven you better say you don't you do don't you you don't, where you want to go then? Not right now. We're not taking a bus load right now. Like one brother said, he, how come you didn't raise your hand when I gave the invitation? He said, well, I thought you were going right now to heaven. No, we're not going to heaven right now. No, no, I don't want to go right now. <laughs> not necessarily. You want to go to heaven. You want to go to heaven. You want to go to heaven. Now listen, we're going to pray this simple prayer. And all it is is going to ask Jesus to come into our heart to forgive us of our sins 
and ask him to be our Lord and Savior. Is that okay? Okay, bow your head and pray this after me. And, and I'm going to ask the whole audience to pray with me. Dear God in heaven, I ask in the name of your son Jesus that you forgive me of all of my sin through the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. I ask Jesus to come into my life to make me what I need to be to be my shepherd all the days of my life to care for me to be bigger than anything in my life and one day to bring me home Jesus come into my heart I believe you died on the cross for my sins I believe you were raised from the dead Jesus, thank you for living in me. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Here's your ticket. Here's your ticket. Here's your ticket. Boys and girls, I was saved a little bit before midnight, July 12, 1973. I knelt at my bed. I remember it. Those of you that got that ticket, I want you to take and write today's date on it because this is the day you receive eternal life. This is the day you began your journey with your great shepherd, your good shepherd, your great shepherd, and your chief shepherd. Amen.